Hey guys, check this out. Listen to this. Thank you. That is the brand new 2023 Honda CRV Hybrid. And here is the old one. And in this video, we're going to do something very unique. We're going to compare this one to that one plus another car. But first, a word from our sponsor. It took a while to get up here. We started out around 1959. But we didn't do all that just to get here. We did it to give you a truck that'll take you anywhere. This is the new Nissan. Hey guys, welcome to a winery just outside of Santa Barbara, California. It's me and Case who's behind the camera. Say hi, Case. How's it going? And in this video, we've got not one, not two, but three Honda CRVs. And so we're gonna do something really fun. We're gonna do an old versus new versus new. Now you might be wondering, what's the difference between these three CRVs? Well, to my right, Show them case is a, the 2022 Honda CRV hybrid. But behind me, the blue car, that is the sixth generation, the brand new 2023 Honda CRV hybrid. And to my left, the other red one, that is also a 2023, but that is not the hybrid, that is the turbo. So let's start with the old one case, what do you say, and show them that, and we'll move on to the two new ones. Yeah, absolutely. So under the hood yep, of the old open. hybrid model, you get a pretty similar powertrain that you get in the new model, but less powerful. So this brand new model has 204 horsepower and 247 pound-feet of torque. So that's three more horsepower, 15 more pound-feet of torque than you got in the this old model. But there is something that we have to bring up about this new model yeah, it's versus a little, the old. It's a little bit of a head scratcher. You know, I mean, let's face it, hybrids are really all about fuel economy, right? And actually the old model gets better combined fuel economy than the new hybrid. One MPG, what are the numbers, yeah. Case? So it's 38 on the old, 37 combined on the new, but that's for all wheel drive models. You do now have the option to get a front wheel drive model of the hybrid, and that's 40 combined. Yeah, so if you want the most fuel efficient of these, obviously the 2023 hybrid front wheel drive, but that ain't gonna do you much good if you're in Colorado in winter. Yeah, uh, like we are. Like we are. Uh, the other thing that, that is important to note about all of these is um, the transmission. You know how much I love this transmission case. What's the transmission? <laughs> it's a CVT. That's right, it's a CVT. So uh, that's how you're getting such good fuel economy. So uh, before we go inside, let's talk about styling. Uh, what do you think of the styling between the old and the new? So uh, to me, what they've done is they made the grill obviously a little bit more upright. Uh, they've pulled the headlights, you can see it. They've pulled the headlights kind of further back, giving yeah. it a more... Um, they also push the eight pillars back so you can see where the eight pillar starts is further back so it gives it a much longer looking hood. Honestly, I think that the more upright styling is worth that one MPG hit. I yeah. would take it. Yeah, and it's not just that. It's also uh, this one, the new one, I'm pointing to the blue one, is bigger. Uh, and it's also heavier. It's about 150 pounds heavier. So that's where you're losing your fuel economy. Uh, but you're getting more internal space. And we'll show you that in a second. Yeah, and actually, speaking of styling, can I show you something yeah, funny that I noticed yeah. when I went on the studio reveal of this car? So the hybrid powertrain is the premier, the higher end powertrain versus this turbo model. That's the base powertrain. So you notice on the hybrid, they've got these sportier exhaust accents right here on the bottom of the bumper. But if you notice, only one of them actually has a pipe sticking through it. So this second exhaust accent is filled in, it's fake. But the funny thing is, if you come over here to the turbo, this has no accents on the exhaust, but it actually has dual exhaust. So there's two pipes at the back of this, but they're hidden. Now there's one other important difference between, let's talk about the 2022 and the 2023 hybrid, and that is, well, I'm gonna tell you at the end of this video because uh, this guy does something, actually this guy does something that this one doesn't do. And it doesn't do it terribly well, but it does it, and people have asked for it. Uh, so let's hop uh, inside the 2022 model, and then we can compare directly the difference between the inside and the outside. Now this fifth generation came out, I believe, like five years ago, I wanna say it's 2017. Uh, so back in 2017, push button transmissions were all the rage. Uh, and I've never liked push button transmissions. No, it's never been our favorite. No, I always find them a bit clunky. Uh, where you really find uh, them clunky is when you're trying to do like a five or 10 point turn and you gotta switch from 
reverse to drive, reverse to drive. Uh, it can get a little bit, like I said, clunky. Um, so keep this in mind when we get in the new one uh, because they've gotten away from that. Uh, also, uh, you'll note that there's wood here, uh, whether it's real or fake, I'm yeah, not sure. Yeah, is that wood? It doesn't feel like it. I, I'm probably full wood, let's be honest about it. Uh, but in general, you know, small sunroof, yeah. uh, um, which is, you know, pretty standard for It's a very up. economical interior. Yeah, it's yeah. functional, but not much else. Yeah, let me start it up. Uh, pretty small screen, but well incorporated. Um, volume knob, so unlike the Civic, they didn't get rid of it, which was really good. Uh, you have also, you know, modern controls on the steering wheel. Uh, this one has a heated steering wheel, which is nice. Uh, and then you have this kind of funky, show them the dash. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's more, um, I'm going to call it uh, modern, uh, or at least modern for five years ago, uh, than you'll note in the new one. Uh, you've got uh, uh, two position memory seats, which is nice, uh, and uh, USB uh, ports here. No USB-C, but USB. And you've got different drive modes. Uh, you've got Sport, and you've got Econ, and you've got EV. But there is one missing, which the new one has, which we'll show you as well. Now, in terms of room, um, tons of room in here. Uh, you know, the CRV has, for the last five years, been Honda's best-selling vehicle in their lineup, even better than the Civic. And in fact, these mid-size crossovers have now replaced full-size sedans or mid-size sedans as the best-selling cars in America. So. Um, you can argue which sells better, the RAV4, which directly competes with this by Toyota or this one. Honda prides itself, Case, by <laughs> saying that they don't actually uh, sell cars to rental fleets. Yeah. And so Toyota does, so there's a little bit of a discrepancy there, but they both sell a lot of these every year. What do you think of the infotainment? You know, I think... I don't know. It, I mean, it's not beautiful to look at. And it I would like say... It looks like old Tom-Tommy, doesn't it? It does look like an old Tom-Tom. <laughs> I would say with, with everything on this interior, it's nicely equipped. You have a solid amount of options, a wireless charger, like you said, heated steering wheel. So it's nicely optioned, but it's not a spectacular piece of design. Yeah, and then, of course, there, there are, you know, some kind of basic plastics in here. And we'll talk about pricing as well. Um, the one thing that is gone now from the current lineup is the entry level model, which is the LX. So in the 2022 model, you could start, this started out at about 28, 29,000, uh, but uh, the Honda folks said that nobody was buying the LX. To be more precise, maybe none of the dealers were ordering them. Right. So, so they actually dropped uh, the LX model. So for 2023, you can no longer actually get the very basic entry level and it has gone above 30,000 starting price. Yeah, point. so the new base price is 31,110. Uh, and if you want to get a ELX, hybrid, yeah. yeah, if you want to get a hybrid, the least expensive hybrid model starts at 32,450. All right, well, let's jump in the back seat and see how much room there's back there. I am sitting behind myself. Well, actually, let me adjust this so I am really sitting behind myself. I sit bolt upright case. It's just the way I drive. <laughs> I've noticed that. Yeah, it's not like Andre. He drives like, you know. Like a pimp. Yeah, as, as Nathan <laughs> always says. So let's jump in the back. And let's see what, what, what we have back here. So back here, uh, obviously, it's a CRV, so tons of headroom. Uh, we've got two USB ports. Ironically, we only have one pouch and not the other one. I don't know why that is. You do have vents in the back, which is nice to have. We do have vents. We do have two cup holders. We have, as I see here, probably a 2080 folding rear seat. I mean, these cars are really all about utility, right? This is the car that you're going to move yourself or your friends in, um, most likely. Um, so let's see how much space we have in the way back, because that's really what this is about in some ways. If you have a young family, you know, this is where you're going to fit the stroller. Oh, and actually, you know what? Something we should test. What? So they said that their new lift gate is a lot faster than the old one. You want to do a, you want to do a race? A little drag race, a lift gate drag race? Hold on, let me see. I, I think I can make that happen. Let me just make sure. All right, so what we'll do is we'll close them, and then uh, you open that one, and I'll open this one, and on the count of three, uh, we'll do a drag race. Cool? That sounds good, yeah. All right, so we'll both hit the button. At the same time, On yeah. one or go? On, I'll go three, two, one, go. Okay, we'll, we'll do it on go. And then you guys in the comments, time us, see how long this takes, okay? All right, All right. three, two, one, go. Oh, look at that. Ah, uh, what? Maybe four <laughs> seconds quicker. <laughs> it's definitely quicker. And actually, while well, we got them open, let's 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 do some. Let's see how much space there is. So, um, we know the numbers. <laughs> yeah. But before we get to the numbers, let's just do like a test, the Roman test. So, oh, you can fit 
Probably 1.5 Romans. Uh, probably, yeah. Yeah, it, it seems pretty, you know, a little t tight on headroom, but <laughs> plenty of room. Let's, let's it, look at that one. But it would work. Yeah, it'll work. Let's try this one. Oh, look at this. Somebody reclined these seats all the way back. So oh, can, yeah. Ooh, look at that. Recline, you can do. A Honda says these are the most comfortable uh, rear seats in the business. We'll get to that in a but second. But is it the most comfortable trunk? Oh, definitely. Look. Well, we had that little partition. Yeah, this is probably 1.7 Romans that you can I think, get in I here. think there's like, what, two more cubic feet in this one? Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's what, it's 36.3 with the seats up, and then if you put the seats down, it's 75 and a half cubic feet. So, solid amount of space. Yeah, yeah, what do you think of the wheel choices? Do you like the, let's compare those. I think we've gone up a size in tire and wheel. So this one has, of course, the, well, I was gonna say new blacked out wheels, but the blackout midnight edition thing has been going on for about five years now, if not longer, dude. Yeah, and it looks like they are both on 19s, but um, I do like the appearance of the new wheel better. Overall, styling on the new CRV is pretty sharp, especially compared to you know where we're coming from yeah this is kind of frumpy and this is kind of sporty does that make sense yeah it's got some really nice hard lines on it that just give it a little bit more of a confident look yeah. i would say yeah it's uh not as like uh, roly-poly all right yeah here your turn to be on camera i'm gonna swap with you and let's go look at the turbo huh yeah so let's check out the interior on this turbo because this one is actually specced with a lighter interior so it'll be a little bit easier to see and Exterior styling is a big point of difference between the new and the old CRV, but even more so, this new interior. Let me go on the other side huge, so you, yeah. you can point out the big difference, which remember I was talking about. Remember how you ship these things? So uh, let, let's talk about let's talk about the way you shift them in a park and drive. Yeah. And go. So this is something that, as enthusiasts, we absolutely love because you just get more positive feedback from switching your different transmission settings here with a, a genuine shifter. Now we're, uh, in, we're in the turbo now, just so you know. Yeah, and yeah. We'll go under the hood in a second. You wanna talk about uh, also the screen and the navigation? Go to navigation, see if it's less TomTom-like. Yeah, let's see. We'll go home, I guess we're already home. Where would navigation be? I'm always really bad at these systems. All we need Tommy here, phone. huh? I know, Tommy knows his tech. Maybe this one doesn't have navigation. It, Maybe we have to show it on, yeah, the, on, the, on the hybrid. Yeah, this because this is a more base model because we're dealing with the base powertrain here, so I don't see navigation. But this screen, I can say confidently, much better looking. Still have a physical volume knob. Also have physical controls for the climate, which is getting harder and harder to find in different cars. And just like on the interiors of the new Civic and the HRV, these controls look and feel really nice, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I love I love these little guys. Look, yeah. they, they get this like satisfying click to them. You hear it? Kind of yeah. click, click, click. And uh, there's a number of cars right now that are trying to do this vent integrated into the whole width of the dash kind of thing. I think Honda does this as well as anybody uh, because that that detail on the dash just really makes it look now, sharp. Now we've got a USB and a USB-C right yeah, there, which is cool. Yeah, and a C. And, and then, then I like this drive mode selector a lot better than the push buttons that we had in the older so, interior. So show them the one that, that, that is new. There we go. You just, so, did you see it? Snow. And then look at the instrument cluster. It's much more traditional, right? Show yeah. Show it to them. It's like, you can actually zoom in. So let me zoom in on you for there. Yeah, uh, so it, it looks a little bit more like an old school. Oh, well, that's very zoomed in. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it looks a little bit more like an old school analog gauge cluster, which I like. I think it's sharp, you know, white gauges with a black background. And then here, of course, you have all your ADAS, in other words, uh, autonomous, uh, you know, driving, so lane centering, uh, basically adaptive cruise control, right? That's becoming big. Uh, and, and, and it's here in this car. Honda says yeah. that, you know, the one thing they never skimp on is safety. Do you know how many airbags? Do you remember we were talking about this? You know, I didn't see a total of how many airbags, but it's, it's a, a lot. lot. And then you've also also obviously got adaptive cruise control, automatic emergency braking, lane departure warning, um, auto high beams. There's, there's tons and tons of safety tech features that are built into these um, right from the get-go. And hill descent control, of course. Yeah. Uh, you know, phone charging, yep, and like I said, a, a, a new snow mode. And then let's talk about, this one doesn't have paddle shifters. We'll show you on the hybrid, because yeah. that one has paddle shifters, but they do something really interesting, which um, actually you wouldn't think the paddle shifters would do. All right, you want to yeah. jump in the back, see how much room there is? Yeah, and then before we step away from the turbo completely, it's worth mentioning. Did you pop the hood? Yeah, so this powertrain. Yep. 
produces 190 horsepower, 179 pound-feet of torque, and looking at about 29 MPG combined from this 1.5 liter turbo. Also mated to a CVT transmission, uh, so obviously less power and a lot less fuel economy than you get on the more premium powertrain option which you would expect. And I'm sure our viewers will correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is the same powertrain as in the Civic, right? Yeah. The same little turbo. I think so. Yeah. I'm sure there's some minor differences, but it's essentially the same All right, thing. jump in the back. See oh, how much room there we is. We gotta see how it is. Well, and this is always the, probably the toughest thing about being me and reviewing cars is I'm not big like Andre and, and Roman. I'm five foot 10, so I'm swimming in extra leg room and head room and look, here. Once again, pocket here, no pocket there. Yeah, no pocket here. I wonder why that is. You think that's like uh, cost cutting? They it said, might be. They said the one thing they've done is they've actually uh, in improved the anchors for child seats, made them easier to use uh, in this, uh, because obviously if you have children, you know, getting one of those big child seats in here is always a fight. Yeah. And so, you know, they've thought about that and they've made it easier to get. And we do have cup holders here again in the armrest, but this being a more basic model, than what we have in that hybrid. Uh, no USBs on the back here. All right, well, let's jump in the top of the line because this is the, I'll show you, this is the CRV Hybrid Sport uh, yeah. Touring. So this is the top of the line. This is the top of the line at 38,600 starting. starting. Yeah. yeah. So it's gonna go above 40, I bet, when it's all said and done. Oh yeah, this interior, a little bit more difficult to see because it's so dark, but it's got this nice orange stitching on the shifter, on the steering wheel, on the seats, on the center console. Yeah, uh, this it, is... it looks much more premium. I yeah. like the fact that you have a little hybrid over here. You can't see it, but it says hybrid on the side. <laughs> yeah, so your passenger knows and, if you haven't told and look, them. look, we have, I'll show you, we have paddle shifters. Uh, and you want to tell them what those are for? Because they've got a plus and a minus on them. There so these, these essentially, uh, it adjusts how much regen, how much braking that you get when you let off the throttle, but unlike in a lot of EVs, it doesn't make a substantial difference to how much you're actually slowing down. Yeah. It's a pretty minor amount. Yeah, yeah, and then there's a B right there as yeah, well. Yeah, that's the other way that you can adjust it. Yeah. B, B gets you more region. More region, more region as well. So basically they're not uh, shifting the CVT, uh, they're changing the amount of region that uh, the vehicle provides. Uh, now, the screen isn't huge, but there's no, a navigation, a nine inch. right? So we're, this one's much less Tom Tom, much less yeah. cartoonish. It's a lot better looking. Um, and yeah. you, you know, you could you can pinch. Well, yeah. I've just made the whole road disappear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're kind of in the middle of nowhere, so it's hard no. to get any service. No, no, we don't want any of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's it is a, a sharp looking system. It's simple. I mean, at this point, pretty much everybody is going to be using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. And if you get a base model vehicle with a seven inch screen, you're gonna have wired CarPlay and auto. Um, but if you get the bigger nine inch screen, then you'll get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And then do you want to test out the back seat on this one to see how you fit in the yeah, new model? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. You also get the small sunroof. So it, yeah. they, they, they didn't go with like the full size sunroof. Uh, so that hasn't changed on this. But yeah, let me, let me sit behind myself because I drove it here uh, and we'll switch cameras again. Cameraman, yeah, let's talk about that. So let me see if how comfortable I am in the back seat of this guy. This does feel more premium case. Yeah, no, the interior is a lot nicer. I really like the orange stitching. I think it's a good look. Yeah, look, look tons of headroom, tons of shoulder room. Uh, I like these little built-in speakers. I like this kind of uh, faux carbon fiber-ish sort of. Yeah, kind just of deal. kind of a nice texture. Yeah, it's all right. And then you know, I can crank that back. Oh, and get big recline. Yeah, yeah, just really chill out back here. If I was like two years old, I'd be loving my life. <laughs> and then uh, you should have some USBs down there. USB-C, look at that. Nice. Nice, and of course, vents. So that's always a nice feature. Um, yeah, uh, you know, a lot of improvements. Let's face it, um, the CRV came out in 1997 case. Uh, yeah, remember it's it had been like a, for a long time. It had a picnic table in the back. You remember that? Yeah. And back then it was like an anemic, like 120 horsepower. So we have come a long way. And at uh, 37 MPG combined, that's pretty amazing for basically a very now big family hauler, right? Yeah, there's a lot of space in here. You could carry a lot of people, a lot of things. And to have that kind of fuel economy with the utility, it's not bad. All right, so let's talk about the one thing it does uh, that that one doesn't do, 
What is that, Case? It's towing. That's right, it tows. It tows a thousand pounds. Yeah, so even the Honda guys were saying, realistically, if you're towing more than a thousand pounds, you're probably not gonna be looking at getting a CRV. But his justification was, it's easier to put a bike rack on something that comes with a hitch, so. Yeah, so they had a little picture of it towing, you know, like a 250 uh, Honda bike, yeah. and then two little, little kid bikes, which is about a thousand pounds. We were wondering about that. Now, of course, you guys may be wondering about availability. Uh, the Turbo uh, hit dealerships uh, last month in September. Uh, so uh, those are already at dealerships. Uh, Honda is saying that, that, the, that the, like the, days on lot before they sell is almost zero. So they're selling as fast as they can get them to the dealership. Now the hybrid's gonna hit it sometime this month. So it's yeah. coming very soon. Uh, they're gonna be, get this case, 11 factories around the world building it. That's a lot. That's a lot, but we're getting them first and it's being built here and in Canada. Uh, so it's a locally built car uh, in, one of the, in one of the local American factories. Uh, and in terms of like, you know, how far can you drive it on pure battery power? We asked that question, and what was the answer, dude? Uh, did we get a straight answer? Well, to that we question? got the answer of anywhere from five feet to five miles, yeah. depending, you know, how hard you press on the accelerator and uh, if you're going downhill or uphill. So not um, necessarily a straight answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we've got a full driving impressions video coming where we're going to take it for a drive and tell you how it drives. Uh, so uh, be sure to stay tuned for that. Where's that going to be at, Case? Yeah, so that one is probably going to be on TFL now. Or and, all TFL.com. Yeah, you can also check it out, <laughs> is, any of our content there. Which is easier. Uh, let us know uh, in the comments below, um, you know, who's better looking on camera. I know that answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely the case. <laughs> but let, let us know if you like the styling direction. Do you like the more chiseled, the more square jawed look of the 2023 generation versus the previous generation? I certainly do. I've also noticed there's a lot less chrome, dude. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of a stealth look. And even though you've got a few bright work details on the bottom of the front bumper, at least on the hybrid model, um, yeah, it's not in your face. I, I think it's a big improvement. All right, well, there you have it, guys. Remember, you saw it first on the Fastlane car. As always, this is Roman. And Case. Saying thanks for watching and see you next time. Ciao.